is recursion is a pattern. There's different kinds of recursion, which is, I remember one time in, in uh, Stack Overflow, I asked, you know, I was doing a certain kind of recursion and it seemed like a pattern and I asked, is there a name for this? And I was surprised every, that I got kind of called names uh, uh, <laughs> that be like, hey, what do you mean, it's recursion? And uh, then finally somebody pointed me to a wiki PD page that has a list of different kind of recursions, because there are different kind of recursions. Anyway, this gets into that idea, is that recursion's a pattern, and there's different patterns of recursion. So how do you recognize them? How do you utilize them? And uh, so what we're going to do is go from just showing how what we all learn when we're learning functional programming is just writing simple little recursive functions on lists. That's, I mean, it's just pretty much just about every, uh, pro, every uh, functional programming book you'll read, they'll tell you to write all these recursion programs and list, and then the very last paragraph, the last chapter of the book, it'll tell you, oh, by the way, you shouldn't do that, you should use fold. <laughs> but at least you know how it works now. Uh, so we're gonna show how to use fold, and, and then how to use that in a more generic way, and then the big part of the talk, though, is really centered around recursive data types how to turn those into non-recursive data types and then use other functions, uh, library functions, that will uh, uh, handle the recursion for you. So here's the, the very beginning. With explicit recursion, this is what we all see, is like to write a sum of a list, we have a base pattern which is sum of nil is zero. Otherwise, sum, you take the first element, which is the x before the colon, you add it to the recursive call to itself to sum the tail. And that's it. And if you look at, so that works for adding uh, integers, a list of integers, or floats, or whatever, but a list of num num. And uh, the and e, which in the e means explicit, and the reason it says and e in here, because everything in this one file is, I run it. I make sure it actually executes. Uh, so uh, Andy is the same thing. You give a list of booleans and it returns true or false depending if they're all true. And it's the exact same thing. If you look at it, the only thing that's different is in the base case where it's nil, it's either a zero or true. And then the operator that you're using is either plus or the uh, boolean and. Other than that, it's the same thing. So the idea is, you, rather than writing those explicitly, you use a fold, which is a library function. So you can just say fold r of plus of zero, and that will do the same thing as what we saw a moment ago. And the same thing, and f, fold r, you tell it the two things that we needed to plug in were the operator to use and the base case value. And if you look at how they're op uh, those executed, uh, you basically, basically it takes the first element and gives that to the quote left side of the operator and then does a recursive call and does that the rest of the way. So they just plug in those values. It's pretty straightforward. Another example is list where the operator, you actually don't care about the values in the list, you just care about how long the list is. So in this case you're just going to say, do a one plus. So you're going to add one to zero, one and one to that, and one to that, and come up with three. And you ignore the first uh, argument, which is the value of the list element, and you just have an n, and you add one to it. That's it. And this is just another way to say the same thing, which is p means prelude, because I've, I've got a uh, suck defined somewhere else in this file. But you just say, given uh, the successor element, then ignore the next argument. That's what constant does. It grabs that and says, what it, don't care what argument you give me, I'm going to uh, give you. The reason I put this in there is because I've always, when I've given talks about uh, uh, Haskell or function programming, I always like to use id and const, and when I was beginning, I always thought, these are the two dumbest functions I've ever heard in my world. You know, like const and id, why would you do that? The reason you do that 
is because when you have things, you've set up this whole pattern of transformations, but certain data doesn't need at certain points transformations or it needs to be ignored, and ID and const are the perfect things to use at those moments. So this kind of shows that. That's it. it has nothing to do with fold. Uh, so to understand how fold works, you just look at the definition. And what this says is given a type A, which a list of type A, then given a function that is given an A and a B, something of type B, it's going to return a B. Given a seed value or a zero value of B, you're going to ret return a B. So what does that say? Well, for the zero, when the list is empty, it's going to be the B value. And otherwise, it's that function applied to the first element and a recursive call to the rest of the elements, which visually looks just like we were looking at earlier. So that is fold R. And it starts at the bottom? No, it starts up here, yeah. Okay. So if, if you say uh, fold of plus of zero and give it a list of one, two, three, then it will say, it'll see that it's this thing, so you get the X, that's this one. Mm. And then it'll say F, which is this plus, and then it'll say the recursive call, which is this branch here. Right, so it, it doesn't have anything to actually perform that operation on until you get to the end. You, you don't have two numbers that you can add together until you get to the end. But it, it starts building the expression. Right. And an, another aside, this was an interview question, and that was uh, which of the fold L or fold R will handle infinite lists? Which seems like a trick question because when you're, if you're folding, it seems like by definition you're going to, uh, you need to you know, condense it all down into that final B, so you need to have to traverse the whole list. Well, the trick is, is fold R, if you noticed, fold R, this is lazy, it depends on Haskell being lazy, which is why it's a good trick question. And that is, if this function looks at this value, and based on that value decides it doesn't need to go any further, it never has to call this. And so it actually can handle an infinite list. So remember that for your next uh, interview. <laughs> too, too bad the company went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so moving on. So the next part of the talk is uh, about foldable. So we know there is a fold R and fold left, fold right, and fold left prime. I'm not, if, if you start using folds, make sure you go to the Haskell wiki and read up on them because they're a little tricky because even though they seem like a good thing, they can they can use up memory unnecessarily, uh, so you really want to do it. But that's not what this talks about, but definitely take a look at it. Uh, the next part is generalizing fold to work on other types besides list. And the idea is, it just doesn't matter what the type is, as long as you can go to each of its, that, that, that contains in something, you can then get, operate, process that element that's in the structure and you discard the structure so you're boiling it down into some other structure. We always tend to think of folds as like summing or anding or something, but I use folds all the time where I'm actually using it to create, transform something. Because whatever this B is, it can be another functor, it can be another structure. Uh, the main thing is, is the fold is allowing you to walk all this, this uh, type and boil it down into something else. Okay, so here's the idea is fold class foldable, and I'm not going to dive into type classes. Hopefully, you've got made it to that chapter. Uh, but uh, there's a fold R method in the type class, which has the exact same signature, except, as we saw a moment ago, except instead of having a list of A, it has a T of A. And if you see, list of A is almost the same notation. It's just saying that this is a type constructor for lists of type A. And this is saying this is a type constructor for some type uh, that, that is foldable of A. So let's 
use this tree as a type. And this is just a tree that has an empty element, a leaf with an A, and a branch that has two branches and it also has an element in it. And the big thing here is I'm deriving foldable. And you can do that by using the GHC uh, extension, derive foldable. That's required for the rest of the stuff. The EQ functor and show, that's just there to make the rest of the code work. So their example data is just some two binary trees. One's a tree of ints and one is an isomorphic tree of list of ints that contain one element. For no other reason, it just makes the examples easy to deal with. So some of the foldable type class operations, we looked at fold R and so just like we did a moment ago with list, now we can say with, with F1, remember F1 is this tree, we can say let's uh, add all the elements and there's the zero element and there's the list and it gives back 15. And this, this is what I was talking about, about this whole file's executable, is I've got a whole bunch of things like this in it. And I, well, let me just show you. So it has uh, tons of stuff in it, but everything really is live in the thing that made the presentation. And then I run that make sure it's up to date, and I just say main, which uh, runs all the tests, and make sure that my uh, examples are all are correct. That's, that's all that that's about. So here's another one. The F2, remember, was the tree of, of, uh, of list of integers. Thank you. <laughs> so what this is saying is first take the head, so that's just going, and it was always single in, so it's just going to give you something. Then run show on it, which is going to turn it into a string, and then run plus plus, which is the append operator. So now we get back one, two, three, four, five as a string. So it's just a, a way to go across things. Can you show the tree again? That too? Yes. So the, the main point here is that uh, fold then, if you just say derive foldable on your types, you get fold on that for free, which is very useful. You also get some other foldable operations like uh, just fold. And what fold is, is just if you have, if, if you know your tree's not empty, you don't have to provide a zero element. So it's just shorthand. So, and it also, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> That's fold 1R. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fold is the one that says uh, combine the elements uh, using a monoid. And all a monoid is is a fancy term for saying something it has an associative operator, it has an identity, and it has an associative binary operator. So for one, uh, for, for, the, for F2, uh, the monoid is the list, and the uh, identity is the uh, empty list, because that can be on the left or the right side, and the uh, operator is list uh, concatenation, the plus plus. Uh, so if you say to fold over that, it's just going to go each of one of those lists and, and uh, do the plus plus on them, which ends up in this one, two, three, four, five. Is fold finding prelude, or is that somewhere else? Well, it is now. Yeah. It wasn't until just a couple of releases ago. It's 7.8, I think it was. They called this thing the foldable traversable, FTP, uh, foldable traversal <laughs> pr proposal. No, yeah. And uh, so they brought foldable and traversal, so it's automatically in prelude, which w there was some controversy about it because it makes the types a little harder to understand, which if you're a beginner is a pain. If you're used to Haskell somewhat, it's nice because you don't have to drag in a bunch of stuff that you used to have to drag in. That should have been a book. I think it's dated after GHC changed because all the type <coughs> types changed. Yeah. I think the fold was included in 
So, and this was what I said a moment ago about uh, monoid. The actual class looks like this, uh, monoid of any type. If, it, if it's a monoid, it has an empty element, which is the identity. It has map, M append, which says given two things, it'll give back the same thing. And those are the, those are the main things. Uh, they're kind of ugly words because I think in the early days of Haskell, people were thinking of monoids because everybody was used to lists. So an empty list is the identity, and append is the way you get these two things together. Uh, so that's, I think, where those names came from. But, uh, if you, but, that, but it just means, like, like uh, integers are a monoid if, uh, if you're using plus. Uh, so it, 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 or multiplication. Trouble is, in matter of fact, we'll show something about it. Well, not because I'm not going to show. There's, because of that fact, you can use uh, addition or multiplication. You have to do some tricks in Haskell to let know which one you're going to use. But that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> so I'm not going to go off in that direction. And the other foldable operations, fold R1, that was the one I meant a moment ago, the one where you don't have a base case. If you have a non-empty structure, you don't need a base case. So it just says, you know, do the fold operation. And you can change something to list by just saying to list. You can ask if it's empty by saying null. So, and a whole bunch of other ones, length, element, maximum, sum and product. Uh, so I encourage you, if you have data types, to derive foldable, because you don't want to be writing these yourself. You get them for free. Uh, and there's other stuff other non-type class functions, but they still work on things that are, they're not inside the type class, but they still require something to be foldable. 